All right, the concentration of ethanoic acid in vinegar was determined by titration with a standardized solution. So this is our known potassium hydroxide using phenylphthalein red, a 25 ml aliquot of the vinegar. So the thing that we're looking for, the ethanoic acid, is in the conical flask. And you've got your potassium hydroxide that you know the concentration of in your burette. Um, can you get used to when you see these questions, just writing um, that you've got a volume and you've got a concentration. So if you've got two things for the one, you can see that this is kind of screaming out that I can find the number of moles. And this one, I've just got the volume. So the question is, what are we trying to find the concentration of? We're trying to find the concentration of ethanoic acid. So we want to know by the end of this what the concentration of that is. And we know the concentration and volume that we've um, delivered. So you need the equation so, you, so that you know what the mole ratio is. So it's a one to one, one of those, one of those. Um, this hydrogen on your um, carboxylic acid and your hydroxide iron get together to make water. So that's what the reaction actually is. And your potassium ions and your ethanoate ions form your salt. So this is uh, an iron to form a salt. So you write the positive ion first normally. And then don't forget your states when you're doing a reaction. Um, all right, so first thing, we want to find out how much of the known that we've got. Calculate the amount in mole of potassium hydroxide. So, so you should titer. This is a, an easy question right at the beginning. So you haven't had to work out an average titer. They've just given it to you. You know the concentration, so you work out the moles. Um, our units here, <coughs> with all your volumetric, we can our volumes are all to two decimal places. So you have four numbers. But, so the concentration is the thing that you're going to have to look at. So we've got three significant figures here and four there. So your all your answers will be at the lowest number of significant figures that you've got. So you've got three. So you need to round it up to three. You can keep all of your numbers in your calculator and just round them up as you go. But use this one for the next step. Um, so your volume was in mils. You need to be able to convert it into litres to use because this is moles per litre. Um, so your ratio, you know that it's one litre for every thousand mils. So the mils cancel out and you've got the litres. Um, you, you know you're dividing it by a thousand most of the time. So a quick way of doing this, like if you can't remember, you can do this, but a quick way of noticing is that um, the places here, this is one litre, this is 100 mils, this is 10 mils, this is one mil. Okay, so your place values. So if you've got 20, 20 is going to be in um, the tens column, the tens. So I kind of skip this step after a while and just realize that I've got it's in the tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. So it has to be in the tens column, not in the hundreds column. And I just put 0 0.02156. So you get you can sort of speed it up a little bit. All right, so we're doing our um I've got our acid. Here we go. Here. Got our base that we know of. So we're going from our base that we know. I should have written this around the other way. What we know, number of moles of this. Then we go to the number of moles of the unknown. So the unknown is this. So you use your ratio which for this is a one-to-one. -one. Once you've got your number of moles of your um, ethanoic acid, then we can use that number of moles and the volume that we had down here in here to work out the concentration. So it's all of these um, 
stoichiometry and volumetric questions, this is the basis. And then we can add to this. So we might have um, a tighter we have to work out, or we might have to make up our um, known concentration. Um, we might have diluted this. So once we find the concentration, maybe we have to go on further and work out the undiluted. So this is the basis, the middle part that you always use for volumetric, um, but we can extend this question. Okay. Um, so you need to find, we've done this, you need to find the number of moles of your known. And then once you know the number of moles of your known, you use your ratio, it's a one to one. You put what you want on the top, what you've got, and the relationship between them. Make sure these numbers are the same. So whatever the ratio, mole ratio number is, if it's a one mole of this or two, make sure it's there. So put your, what you want on the top, then take that over the other side and multiply it. So at this point it's really easy. You need to kind of write this out on the exam to show that you've done this, that you've related the number of moles of what you're trying to find to what you've got, and what you've got was 0.025. So you need to write this somewhere. Um, then once you know the number of moles of the known one, uh, the what you're trying to find, then you just find the concentration. Make sure you converted your tighter, the volume down here, converted it into litres, and make sure you write your units and the correct number of significant figures. So you could get multiple marks. If they were marking this one for units, you would get a mark for writing the units. If they were marking this one for significant figures, you'd get a mark for significant figures. Okay, so if we want to turn, this is moles per litre. If you want to turn it into grams per litre, then you just, whenever you're converting two parts, um, just convert one thing at a time. So if you need to turn this into grams, turn it into grams and then just put it back over the litres. If you needed to turn this into mils as well, turn the one litre. Moles per litre means moles per one litre. So just turn the one litre into mils. It would be a thousand mils. So whatever you've got over here would be divided by a thousand and then you would have it per one. Okay, so you know how to turn moles into grams. Just use the equation, rearrange the equation. Make sure you've got the right um, molar mass. So collect, collect all your hydrogens and do them all at once and collect all your oxygens and your carbons and then it's just that's how many grams it is per litre. It's the same as that's how many moles it is per litre per one litre.